recognizing when you're falling into this trap. The biggest sign is when you start to rationalize why you should keep going, even when logical choice, the thing that makes the most sense, the thing that is the most obvious is to stop. And this can sound like, okay, well, I've already put so much time into this. I can't really quit now. And I see this a lot with contest prep. People be like, you know, I'm 12 weeks in. Um, you know, I if I just push a little bit more the next 12 weeks, I can make up for whatever body fat I haven't lost thus far. Almost, almost never a good idea. Hardly ever, and I would say almost exclusively when people get into this mindset that I'm just going to double up on the fat loss. I'm just going to work harder. You dig yourself into this hole. And like, frankly, there's not a lot that you can do to play catch up towards the tail end because fatigue is already so high. And really, if you are familiar with my methodology with like how you need to approach contest prep, how you need to approach fat loss is like you should have a plan. You should have one that's thought out that makes sense. And if that includes if your plan A is like, well, if I fall behind, I'm just going to keep pushing. I'm just going to work harder at the end. It's like you can only do that to a certain extent before you dig yourself in such a hole that you just can't keep up with the interest that's due. Like the same thing applies in any kind of relationship. And this doesn't have to be just like an intimate relationship. I see this a lot also with like coaches or even professional relationships. We've been together so long, it'd be a waste to break up. And it's like, yes, but again, you're focusing on what you would lose. And you know you're in that sunk cost fallacy when the reasons for continuing are more about not wanting to waste what you've already invested in. For a lot of people, that is the time. That is what they've put in um, to the greatest extent. And rather than focus on the actual value that you would be getting from moving forward and it's not about what you stand to gain. It's about what you're afraid of losing. So in this case, like I would say paying attention to the emotions that are driving your decisions. Uh, are you making the choices out of fear of failure? Are you trying to avoid disappointment or really the, I guess, the realization that like, hey, um, maybe I haven't been as present as I should have been earlier on because it would have made a lot of sense earlier on to recognize these signs because they were there and I think once you start to spot these patterns, you can begin to challenge them. So in the case that we're talking about, like, should you actually keep going? This is the toughest decision that I think someone's going to face when they're amidst like that fat loss phase, like when they're in the thick of it, when they are really in that state of discomfort, especially if you've been dieting for a while and you aren't continuing to see the results that you've expected. And the deeper in that you get, the more you might be thinking, well, I've come this far. I can't stop now. But really, you have to take a step back and you know be honest with yourself for a moment. Sometimes the path you're on isn't leading you to where you want to go. Sometimes it is just safer to continue with what you know than to challenge that current situation and potentially remove yourself from it. And frankly, just continuing because you've already put in so much time, because it feels safe, because it feels familiar, it doesn't mean that it's the right move. And the truth is, if your diet isn't aligned with your goals and like long term, I know like the immediate goal might be well, like getting to stage or in the case of a non-competitor, just someone like I I'm going to achieve 20 pounds of fat loss in totality. You really have to ask yourself, is this leaving you feeling drained? Like, is this like mentally and I don't mean like just the physical discomfort of fat loss, but like emotionally, is this still aligned with how you want to execute and how you want to get towards the goal that you're working towards. So really you have to ask yourself is like, okay, how clear is it to you why you're doing what you're doing? And this is really how I would go about like reassessing. These are the, just the subtle signs that might indicate maybe it's time for a change. So first up, progress feels inconsistent or minimal despite your best efforts. Um, you're putting in work you're being it as adherent as you know maybe your coach is asking you to be but each week the results seem to be slipping further and further out of reach and yes like plateaus can happen and you can have weeks where like maybe fat loss isn't going to be as meaningful or to the degree that you're hoping it will be but if you've been on this and like this kills me when I hear people like this happens all the time by the way all the people come to me they'll be like I've been dieting for six months and I've barely lost eight pounds I'm like what do you mean? Like when was the last time you saw like meaningful progress? They're like, oh, like three months ago. Like since then we've kind of just been coasting. Like we've tried different approaches, but still nothing. Like my body literally hasn't changed for three months. 
you're constantly feeling worn down yes physically emotionally and like again some of this is expected when you're in a fat loss phase but what started as a challenge in turn like really just started as like an adjustment to doing the things that you need to do to be in a deficit now it's become this chore where it's like every part of what you need to do to be successful it's just becoming heavier and heavier and it's ultimately taking a more costly toll on you the longer that you do it the energy the focus you had you're getting none of that and like I've talked about the adherence scaling criteria with like you know one to five still assuming that you're adherent like across the board but if you're waking up constantly like at like a one or a two and you're like you know like no days of the week am I waking up not wanting to fuck my diet right off like every day I'm trying to find loopholes or ways that we can work around the things that I need to do to be successful the sacrifices no longer feel worth it Um, and this is one that like I can think back to a time during contest prep where my last prep I was like I'm willing to finish this but I'm kind of done. Like I, I I don't think any amount of success on stage, like it will be appreciated and I'll be proud of it, but I need a break. Like it's just, I'm not willing to continue to feel as bad and as like heavy as uh, the work of this actually is in combination with the other responsibilities that I have at the time. And what you're giving up, I mean, it's your time, your social life, your mental peace. It's starting to feel disproportionate to what you're gaining. And that's where like, I know that a lot of people, they'll be like, okay, well, you just need to stick it out. Like, it'll be worth it. But the reality is a lot of times, like more often than not, when you compete, you are not going to get the reward that you truly seek. Because obviously when you compete, like people are like, yeah, I, I, I'm going to be proud with whatever the outcome is. And I think you should be process oriented, but as competitors, it does make sense that you're like, I want to win. And statistically, if you just look at like, what are the odds of winning? It's like, not only do you have to be your best, but you have to beat people that frankly, you have no control over how they're going to show up. And if you want like a fair win, like one that is well deserved, that should mean that truly the only way that you win is by bringing the absolute best to stage. And just frankly, with such a subjective fort, uh, and frankly, just with such a subjective sport, it can be one of those things that can be really disheartening. So, I mean, like I caution people on like that being their primary motivator and really like when every decision starts to feel like a burden and the joy that should come from that progress has been like replaced by frustration. So like you're really just going through it, just a spin cycle of like, okay, I just need to get through it. I just need to get to the finish line. That to me is a very, very clear point of concern whenever I see that in an athlete. I think another thing, another big thing is like, you're beginning to question everything that you're doing. So I mean, like, especially for my clients where I'm like, Hey, I have this laid out very like systematically, you're going to see where we need to be every single week. But towards the tail end, if like everything is starting to become that question of like, but is this going to be enough? Is this going to be working? And it's like, yes, like you should generally expect that you're going to have moments where you pause and wonder like is the diet still effective but not to the extent where you're questioning your progress every single moment of every single day and like you know sure there's the physiological effects that like you know certainly can play a role and you can begin to see signs and manifestations of your body just like not responding and I think this is even more so the case in contest prep but this is very much something to pay attention to in terms of biofeedback for the non-competitor because it's like if you're waking up you're constantly under recovered you're losing touch with that overarching goal you don't feel any of that motivation even when you do see that rate of loss begin to catch up and reflect what you're hoping for yes we could be looking at something that's a little more deep-seated that is you know your body saying like hey this is time like this is the most that we can push before we start regressing and the big telltale sign to me is like when you begin to have a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear of having to continue to dig and to make more adjustments that ultimately yes will get you to the goal and that's where the way I see this manifest is like a negativity relative to like hey you know this person is like I I still have another five pounds to lose and I'm like okay well we're not losing at the presumed rate of loss and we're seeing this over the course of multiple weeks so we need to ultimately increase the deficit either by lowering food or increasing output 
And whenever I like make that suggestion, like, hey, this is what needs to happen in order to continue to see progress. If there's this overwhelming sense of like dread or this like negativity that comes with like, I, I just can't do that or I just like I'm very resistant to wanting to do that. That's when I begin to question, okay, like, have we pushed to a point where from here, here on in, this is not going to be nearly as productive, even though just in in theory, like just putting someone at these calories, putting them at this cardio, this should result in more progress. And I think if any of these resonate with you, I think it's time to ask yourself like, hey, is the path that you're on, is it still serving you? And are you really staying committed just based on fear or wasted effort? And remember that like the point of doing this, this is supposed to help you feel better. Like truly, this is supposed to be something that you become a better athlete for. You're supposed to feel better generally about your body, even if it is uncomfortable. But if you find that you're moving further and further away from your goals and then like this cloud of negativity is just like harboring over you as like, well, yeah, like now I'm associating everything that I'm doing as a negative like really as just like well I'm going to do this and sure it's going to get me to my goals but it's going to take a lot of suffering that's really the time where I would consider reassessing 